All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Introducing a 2000 Honda CRV. Um, I really wasn't going to do this video. Um, I guess I have seen that there's a trend uh, for the auto YouTubers to, you know, show a lot of the diagnostic videos and then pop back into the, you know, just straight on wrenching repair videos. Um, and I thought about it, you know, if you have one of these, an older Honda, any of the B-Series engines, and you wanted to tackle an oil pan, um, you might want some tips that are a little bit outside of the realm of just what you get from your uh, typical service manual. So I figured, you know what, I'll bring you guys along um, for the ride and show you what I do and point tips along the way as I do them. So, obviously, since we are doing an oil pan, which is leaking, I'll show you that, but you already see I have the... Uh, oil fill cap off and I have a funnel there okay um, and this is a habit I put it right here over the ladder. Uh, I apologize for the racket there um, I've had a habit that was uh, kind of passed on to me when I first started uh, as an old loop tech you know um, to leave the oil filler cap here uh, that way you wouldn't forget to put it back when you got them with an oil change um, because, you know, that can make a mess and, and, and uh, lead to irate customers. Also, putting it right here on the latch, um, if you inadvertently shut the hood, you may, you may destroy that, okay, if you're not paying attention. However, it's better than letting the car leave without the filler cap on. So that's there, and I put the funnel in there to remind me that I have drained the oil um, to put oil back in it. Now, these may seem redundant, but um, no matter how good you are, you're no better than a, a careless loop tech if you get to put oil oil back in an engine so uh let me show you what we're working with okay so now we're down here under the car and you might be able already to see um a lot of grime back there on the exhaust pipe and the power tape off and stuff like that and that's just you know car not caramelized car carbonized i guess oil burning on the exhaust over time it's been leaking for a while you can actually see there's no grime build up on the oil pan because this is actually an active leak that's kind of a uh, oil leak kind of clue if you're trying to trace the origins of a leak try to look for where you see clean sheens of oil not necessarily the grime and gunked up stuff like that but clean sheens that tells you you have an active leak and if we look up here we'll see like all the drain bolt the the, sorry, the mount bolts for the uh for the oil pan they have uh they have oil on them so that kind of gives you an idea that the oil wherever it's coming from is kind of flowing around the lip and the edge there and collecting on the drain bolts so uh see another active leak there now i'm a little worried about that guy right there that drop uh seeing as the edge of the oil pan gasket is right at the same height as this uh intermediate shaft bearing it's very possible that while driving it sprayed back but i looked a little higher up and um, i'm an advocate of attacking oil leaks from the top down and uh so i have previously put a valve cover gasket a distributor o-ring basically a lot of the culprits the, the common culprits that cause you to think you have a low down oil leak up top that were leaking have been replaced um so the process for getting the oil pan off uh since we're changing the uh gasket uh i looked at the threads for the drain bolt this vehicle has way in excess of 200,000 miles on it and that drain bolt while it does get tight the 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 threads are, are are you know they're on their last leg so there's no point in me doing all this work only for the threads to get stripped out of like a jiffy loop or something and then now we need an oil pan so we're putting an oil pan on it too uh and the uh oil pan gasket so the process to do that is the exhaust here okay this a pipe um or engine pipe uh has to come off and it is held on by three 14 nuts okay i've already actually started look at the camera and so i took that one off i think i took that one off and then i gotta take this one off um i went to get the camera because you know what's next after that is to take uh, these two there's a stay bracket a support bracket it goes from the a pipe here to the block over there now it's it's pretty flexible steel so i don't have to take it off up top i can just bend it backwards and the studs will pull out now ordinarily for ease um, i would take these bolts out these spring bolts but as you can see the flange is on its last leg there matter of fact i might be in trouble here tonight if this breaks off so i got to be really careful with how i manipulate that um, and you know you disconnect the o2 sensor 
That way you don't pull the connector, uh, the wires out of the connector. So once the exhaust is out the way, um, the bolts for the oil pan are pretty visible. I might have to disconnect part of this splash shield to get to the corner ones here. I can bend it back. Um, but the other part that has to come off is this cover for the flywheel slash torque converter, depending on whether you have an automatic or a manual. This cover here is a uh, is the cover. This is the automatic. So this cover here uh, covers the flywheel and uh, the flex plate. And it has a little bit of interference with the oil pan there. I say a little bit because not much, but the oil pan will not come out of there. So you cut, it won't clear the studs for those nuts over there. Now, had they put uh, bolts all the way around, you could just slide it this way and it would come out. But there are several studs um, that the nuts go on to. I think there are four over here and then two in the middle somewhere. So, um, yeah, so this has got to come off. It's not, a, it's not hard at all. A three 10 millimeter bolts and then this 17. Uh, trans mount bolts. Okay, so that's that. Um, actually, yeah, that's not a trans mount bolt. It's a case bolt. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I guess I could set you guys nearby to watch me struggle. But while I get set up here and get tools, I figured uh, I would just show you what we're about to do. So let me get tools and come back and see if I can't get you guys set up uh, for this epic old pan uh, adventure. Okay, so I've got my 14 millimeter here on a uh, half inch extension, half inch gun. Uh, what I did do is the compressor interrupted me earlier. I went to turn it off. Sorry for the vibration, people. It's real live working here. Um, so ordinarily, I think I probably would like splice and edit this, but one of the things that I've come to realize with a lot of... Yeah, so that nut got stuck in the uh, socket here again tips and tricks most people probably know this most people don't so you could actually tap because the um, sockets are typically hardened and the nuts are not the corrosion probably got it jammed in there so one of two ways you could thread it back on you could thread it back on the stud and then wiggle a socket and then you know it would come loose and you take it off or you could just hit that with a hammer now since I did not bring a hammer because I wasn't expecting to have a problem with my last one I don't feel like going to get one right now. I'm just going to thread that on nearby stuff, wiggle it, and get it to come off. Uh, it might be easier said than done because I did put a little bit of a wobble extension on this guy so I could get into this without interference and it might impede my ability to thread this on expeditiously. All right, so that's not happening, and I'm losing patience. So what I'm going to do is end up tapping this either on the floor or succumbing to the powers that be and going to get a hammer. Well, tapping it there wouldn't get it out. Yeah. Come off. All right, you know what? Since I don't need it now, I'm going to leave it with the other two, and then we're going to go take... Yeah. Take the two 12 millimeter nuts off the stay bracket there. Wouldn't it always be in forward? Man, man, man. All right. Ah, loud. All right, so get that right there. Where are you? There we go. started all right so the idea is push that back yikes I'm gonna have to get a uh, primer. it's not as flexible as I remember. all right let me go get that I'll be back all right so I got a little mini pry bar here going in between them and see that so ah just fell out see that all right, so here's what I'm worried about now. The weight of the exhaust on this flange with the spring bolt, it looks like all the corrosion is holding it together as one component. So I wouldn't want to flex this joint too much. This is the flex joint. Um, it's a gasket with, uh, you know, in a ball socket type assembly here. And uh, it's all corroded up. So I'm just going to, I'm going to actually leave it where it is. I think I can work around it. Th these are 
one of the things about older cars you really don't want to come in here and move too much around if you don't have to um, so now I need 10 millimeter stuff and a 17 there uh, so I do believe it's uh, what's that four eight blah 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 16 and like 20 or 22 I'm oh, sorry I was trying to count the tens I need um, but I do need to remove this. I don't feel like struggling with it. So up here are also two push pin, plastic push pins, I believe they are. But they're 10 millimeter head like uh, uh, screw bolts. The push pins are actually like 10 millimeter bolts. So these two are going to come out. This will move out of my way a little bit. And then I can get to all the bolts for the old pan. So let me get my 10 millimeter ratchet and swivel socket. And uh, uh, what's interesting is if I recall correctly, my swivel socket's not here. That blows! Alright, let me get my stuff. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. I started to think of something. I procrastinate a lot. So, I have several videos that, you know, I made in this fashion. And because I'm kind of worried about their presentation, I haven't posted them because I wanted to edit them. Unfortunately, now, there is one video, or part two of the video, that I moved to my laptop and can't find now. All right, so let's uh, unscrew these push pins and get some room here. Now, for, for not proponents of wearing safety glasses, I don't know if you see all this stuff coming to the camera. Well, I wouldn't want to breathe it in, it's dirt and dust. It's a pain in the ass when it gets in your eyes. So, to each his own, I mean. Yeah, Look at that. All right, so that moves out a little bit just so I can get, oh, guess what? It's dripping on me. All right, so I can get to these. And look, it's all grimy and whatnot. So when I pull this down, I'm going to actually use um, something, uh, uh, some scotch Bright or a, I have a fine brush aluminum um, attachment for my little, a rotary tool and I'll use it to clean up that surface so that the new gasket oh great and so I there we go all right so over there is our 10 millimeter I guess I could do this to prevent them from getting stuck my sockets when I need the socket so I think I'll start doing that and I probably should put another glove on so much shoulds this is what takes so long. So dainty. Yeah. To be honest with you, I'm really not motivated to do this. But it's got to get done. Alright, so the, 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 the annoying part would be to lose any of these bolts. That's that. Yay, got it with one hand. All right, so that's a 17 millimeter. Got the air impact on there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Don't drop it. All right, so you see your plate came off. Just fell out of there. Uh, okay, so now we have an easy shot at the rest of these. So what I'm going to attempt to do now is probably see if I can't get you this. Sit down seat somewhere back here where you can see me. Take these out. Let's see if I can set that up. Don't know if I can. I'm gonna try. All right, so it's bright light for me, I guess. I don't know what you guys are saying. This would be really a waste of, you know what? <sighs> Let me pause this. I really don't want to. I mean, for the most part, you guys, it's not really hard. You can see the 10 millimeters. I really wanted to bring you along. I don't know, make the whole full video. All right, let's just plow through. See what I can do without ruining the phone. Oh, phone or um, yeah, taking forever. So I put a six-inch extension on the uh, on the air ratchet and uh, my ten millimeter there, so. 
will at some point need both hands, and at that point, uh, I will have to put this down. If you guys are with me, great. I don't think I'll stop the video. I think I'm just going to let it record. Yay. They're falling behind me somewhere. Uh-oh. That one fell before I got ready for it to fall. Alright, I can tell what's happening here. So I told you guys I turned the compressor on because I was being rudely interrupted by... I think at some point I'm starting to lose little oomph. Fortunately, none of these are on uber tight, but I don't know. Oh, you know what? We don't have enough. We'll break out the cordless. We'll break out the cordless. You know, the cordless is probably a little more wieldy. Probably not around. Whoops, you're not seeing what I need to. I'm taking off. I need to keep you guys in focus here. That was the whole point of keeping you here, wasn't it? All right, where's that one we're going on next? Come over there. So, what I should do is leave one on this side that I can loosen and hold on to. There we go. I got a suspicion that that's one of the studs that got pulled out. Yeah. So I told you this has studs and bolts. I'm starting to wonder. I'm starting to wonder if I shouldn't have just tightened all these bolts. Because if they're not tight, uh, duh. That's why it's leaking. Well. Sometimes bringing you guys along is actually better than not because a lot of times I can't see and because you guys can. I'm really going to have to turn the compressor on at some point, but I think we're almost home. All right, so... That just started dripping right there. It leaves no doubt in my mind. See, that that's a fresh drop. One just dripped on me straight clear past the uh, shield here. But it leaves no doubt in my mind that this is an actively leaking oil pan. Now, I'm pulling down on this, and I can see the gasket's kind of glistening a little differently. But it doesn't want to budge, so I'm going to have to get that little pry bar and uh, help it along here. There we go. All right, so once you got that, it should, yeah, should follow. No, everybody wants some attention. And what it's gonna try and do here, and I guarantee it, it's going to just try and fall on my chest and paint me with all this grime. Sorry, my hand's in the way, folks. Oh no. All right, well, let me get the old pan down because it won't, uh, my light just went out. All right, I'm gonna get the oil pan down. You guys are gonna help me catch. <laughs> you might as well do something if you're gonna be here. All right. It's not a bad job, really. Like I said, I'm just not motivated. We'll get into why I'm not motivated. If I, if I've forgotten the bolts, I'm gonna feel like a dolt. <laughs> Yeah. Who hasn't done that once before? Ugh.
maybe that's why it didn't want to come down. All right, so now I need to go. Ugh. Oh, here's something that just is going to happen. So the old pickup is right there, and uh, it's going to have a lot of oil dripping in a short while here. And I'm pretty sure there's some more oil up in the pan. So while there's very little for you guys to see, I'm going to have to stop this right here, and I'll bring you back when I have uh, charged back up. And um, I won't do too much, so we can just follow off, follow where we left off. All right. Okay, we interrupt your previously scheduled programming to uh, talk about our replacement oil pan here. So, I set it out here for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, I applied spray tack, which is a spray-on adhesive, to the oil pan so that I could uh, locate the gasket um, without having it slip. And hopefully, it didn't stick to the box. Oh my goodness, I think I'm in trouble. I think I'm in trouble, it's kind of heavy. All right, it's a lot of gravity in her. All right, so here's what, here's what the deal is. All right, so here's what we have. We have an oil pan, yeah, yes. And um, new bolt, yeah, yes. And we have an oil pan gasket, yeah, yes. Now, I don't know what kind of rubber this is made of. It's pretty nice. Um, this is your seal. And um, it was pretty rubbery, like, you know, bouncing everywhere. So what I wanted to avoid is having to chase it while I, you know, located the studs and put that up there. And so I used a layer of spray tack, which is a spray-on adhesive, and put the old pen, put this on the open and flipped it over so that it would adhere to it as the uh, spray tack cured. Now, being a rubber gasket, I typically don't advise the use of any other um, sealant. Um, the spray tack I only use to hold it to the pan. Um, you know, some folks would add another layer of RTV on there. That should be your seal. So. Um, it has done its job. It's stuck there and the holes are located. So we're just going to take it up front. Now, I haven't counted my bolts yet and nuts and I haven't cleaned off anything here. But like I promised, I said I was going to bring you guys back. So I will do that. All right. So what I need to do now. Um, uh, so brake cleaning the can and a rag would be nice. All right. Let's have something else. All right, so here's our old oil pan. Yeah, dinging! Ugh, right there. Let's take that out and put it in the oil drain. Ooh, we still got some oil dripping. Don't like the oil dripping. I let it drip on the rag. How about that? It's not a lot. All right, so I'm going to drain this stuff. we doing uh oh i was supposed to be cleaning off that surface eesh thanks all right so let's see the surface there not too shabby it's gonna drip everywhere i have grind for days Oh, here's another trick, it, and believe me, I've seen this happen before, so I know to protect against it, but um, if you don't know, I've seen guys who've worked on cars for years make this mistake, and so I'm going to pat. These are the tips of which we spoke. All right, so let me grab this rag real quick and just wipe a lot of this schmoo off. I might still come through here with the, uh, still going to come through here with the scotch Bright. Some of these places don't inspire ceiling confidence. All right, so. All right, here's the deal. I see the dipstick here. The dipstick. All right, so if you manage to fold that over for some reason or other, and I've seen it happen, and get it trapped between the oil pan and the block, you won't find out about it until you're done when it starts pissing out oil. So what I do is I pull it up from the top. So I'm going to go up to the top, pull that up, I'm going to get some scratch bright and clean this off again. Get a rag, wipe it clean and dry. And then we're just going to uh, count our bolts and put this back up. All right, let me go get my, uh, what am I looking for now? Uh, scotch bright. Okay, so while I was up, I just grabbed all the uh, nuts and bolts and cleaned them off and some brake clean. And that pan over there. 
Uh, so this is scratch bright. I ripped off a little sheet, and I think I might have shown this work before. It's it's pretty great when you're trying to uh, clean off gasket surfaces. Now the good thing about this gasket surface is that there was no RTV adhesive, but you know if you look at it over time, the oil leaking and the buildup from it, you know I just don't want to risk that rubber seal not contacting the metal. Uh, and then you know seeping so I'm gonna do the best I can now I'm not gonna do this with one hand so I'm just gonna get, show you guys like what it can do it'll look like over here with these holes all right and this isn't with a lot of brake put some brake clean on it to aid it but without the brake clean a lot of it anyway okay so I look at this hole right here and see it, it does that so if there's anything there, it helps me get it off. Not too much abrasion to the material. And that's uh, so I'm going to do that all the way around. Clean it off. And then uh, I'll bring the oil pan up. And we'll locate the oil pan. Alright, let's see how this goes. So, clean that up with scotch Bright. I needed two hands for that. I mean, it, not really just a, one to hold the can, one to... This, oops, look what I did not do yet. Let me pull my dipstick out. <laughs> Oopsie. Alright, so there's dipstick there. I could just pull it out and leave it here, but with my luck, it'll slide back in and I won't be looking. Alright, damn. Sorry for the shakiness of the shaking break. Alright, now, so uh, the gland end of here, of the oil pan here, the deep side. Is to accommodate this and the shallow ends over there by the trans. So we're going to pick her up, rotate her, and the good thing about those studs is that they help us locate the oil pan. Now, I didn't want to turn the compressor back on because I knew that uh, from where it was, it was going to make the racket for a long time. So I have decided to go green and I've got my uh, cordless little quarter inch impact. So we'll see how well he chooches. Yeah, sorry, everything's in the way here. I'm trying to one-handedly raise the oil pan without uh, disturbing the gasket there. Line it up with the studs and uh, see if you guys can see what I'm doing here. Hang on. Uh, my little splash shield here was in the way. So what I'm going to try and do, see that stud there? That stud there. I'm going to try and line it up with its uh, hole. And uh, if I do it right, should poke out the bottom. Uh, don't know what happened there. Didn't poke out the bottom. What's going on, people? What's really going on? Okay. I'm gonna push it up a wee bit, and uh, I'm a little nervous now because this is looking like it's uh, too thick. Well, I got a stud poking out here, but that one in the middle. Oh no! I see what's happening. Somebody else is not seated. Uh, this could be a problem. Remember that one stud that I said pulled out? It seems like its hold isn't lining up and the rest of the crew doesn't want to play ball. All right. Yeah, all right, so it's up there now. So I thought about something while I was getting prepared to do this and it harkens back to a lot of folks who I, 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 I hear when I'm talking about uh, repairs. Not so much in my comment videos, but I've heard it and other, well, I've read it in other people's comments and heard it when I'm talking about it. Gone are the old days, you know, when uh, men could just work on their own cars. I'm sorry for the shakiness. I'm, I'm trying to do too much with one hand. Um, well, here's what I have to say. To you. We didn't dream up the Jetsons, okay? You guys did. And at some point, we got hooked. And so to have self-driving flying cars... Uh, you know, just regular angry pixies and, and electricity won't do it. We need electronics. It's that simple. Plus, you know, a lot of the complexity of a lot of this stuff isn't isn't new. Car, oops, there goes one nut. Way, way over there. Yeah. A lot of the complexity, it, it, cars were complex when they were made. People were like, oh, what's wrong with the horse and buggy? Okay. So, I mean, I see no reason why. It's a little bit of a... Uh, <clears throat> A little bit of familiarity, you know, studying or whatever. 
you get uh, acquainted with the new technology. You know, it's amazing to me. Uh, you talk about how cars are complex. Nobody wants to go back to a rotary phone uh, or analog cell phones. I, I don't see anybody complaining about those. But the car needs to stay in the Stone Age. Give me a break. It's amazing when you look at planes like the Cessna that are still pissing at me. Uh-oh. Don't do that, Faye. That's what we need not do right now. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to uh, probably let you guys take five or something. Because this is one thing. Remember I talked about old cars and how you don't want to screw up? Yeah, last thing I need is to cross thread one of these nuts on this old relic here. Like I said, I'm not really motivated to do this job, so the last thing I need to do is to screw up. Yeah, but it's easy peasy. What's happening here? I hope you guys are still on. I'd be upset if I inadvertently paused it. Seems like I took an in-video snapshot. Might make that the thumbnail. Like, what the hell is he doing now? All right, so. I believe what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to put all the bolts and studs in to locate the gasket. Which is something dumb that I think I did on this side. I snugged her down. Which I knew better than to do. But, uh, shouldn't be that big a deal. Alright, so, don't know what you guys can see here. I'm just going to start these. Uh, so, if this video at least helps any one body, little tips here, scotch bright, the tools you need, pull the dipstick, drain the oil, uh, oh, yeah, you know what's crazy? I didn't mention that. I'd already done that. Yeah, in case you guys can't see that one, there you go. I'd already done that. Please drain the oil before you pull the oil pan. I, I think it goes without saying that you should have. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but yeah, drain the oil. What's crazy is that uh, the oil that came out of this thing was just so clean. <sighs> it's a shame to have to waste it, but that's the brakes. Now, I won't judge you if you decide to collect it and pour it back in, but I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to have to revisit that guy. All right, so I'm going to use both hands and get this out the way. I'll bring you guys back when I've tightened them all up before I put the uh, flywheel cover on. All right, so all snugged up. You can see as it uh, squeezes the gasket a little bit there. I want to over tighten it. Um, they typically, you can feel them when they start to resist being pushed. Um, not really sure. I probably should have checked the Honda gasket on the corners is reinforced with a little brass or something, a metal, like a little bushing. And so it kind of limits how far you can torque it down that way. Um, but yeah, so all of them are tightened up. Let's put these uh, little push clips back in here. Yeah. All right, put the little splash shield, secure that. Get some schmoo in my eye. All right, let's do this. Ugh. Can't see what I'm doing. There you go. Right there. And if I got up, could I say yes? But you know, I'm comfortable here, so I get up. Hey, maybe you guys can see what's going on up there. What's happening? I want that whole line up. Are we there? Yes, we are. So I got a disobedient little push pin. Yes, you are. Alright, let's thread it out a little bit. It unscrews, and I guess it just makes that bigger. Ah, uh, now, it, now it's, now it just wants to be an independent thinker. Okay, so now the old pan's up, we gotta put the cover on over there. Not the biggest of choice. As a matter of fact, what the hell was I thinking? So this doesn't even go anywhere, it's a blind 17. I do believe on certain versions of this engine and trans combination, uh, I think with the manual, for some reason there's a stiffener. That's what the part description is called. This little metal like gusset that goes from. All right, let me put this in with one hand and I'll point to where it goes for you. Uh, so it'll go from where this bolt is from here to here. Okay, so it goes a little aluminum piece on both sides. Yeah, can you see? Hang on, let's come around here. Okay, so 
it'll be aluminum a little bit alum, uh, a little aluminum gusset it'll go from here to here little angle piece and there will be two bolt holes here I guess or one or two and from there to there and there'll be another one on this side um, on some some model it's just a whole U piece um, that you know supposed to give some additional rigidity to the powertrain the engine and trans junction all right so put our little bolts back in here and uh, hopefully we've got this oil leak licked think that 10 times fast all right so I'm just gonna put these back in so is this video necessarily long or is it just me because we're 15 minutes in now um, this is the second half I don't know how long it took me to uh, to do the first half. Now, I will admit, since I'm cheating, I did, uh, oh, great. Almost out of arm's reach there. Okay. I did uh, go off camera to do certain things, like if you notice, all those nuts and bolts were kind of less grimy than these, and the uh, cover itself is now grime-free. Um, I took those out and gave them a brake clean bath. Because, oh gosh, you know what? I refuse to let an inanimate object get the better of me. How about that? This screw will thread in that hole. Perseverance overall. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I think I can uh, remove the extension here. I will need some oomph at some point. That three eighths. I don't think there's enough air pressure behind it to. Uh, now, seeing as the only thing that's holding it in, I've got to find a 17 millimeter quarter inch socket and uh, tighten that down and feel comfortable. Yes, I could. I need to get in there with something else. All right, so I need to tighten that. You know, let's see what happens. <clears throat> that's not the. Yes. Let's see what little air we have left. What kind of impact we can make on the situation. Why am I talking funny? I don't know, because I feel like it. There we go. No air. And... Oh, man. Oh, man. That was just sad. So I need to bring my, uh... 10 millimeter, what is that? Okay, tighten those down. I didn't get to those. I'm going to put the exhaust back up. So, boom. Oh, it came down. I think at some point it must have pissed me off. Oh, my gosh. I have moved the gasket. Let everybody be afraid. All right, line those up with the studs. You guys can see better than I can. And once it's up there, now the studs here are in the way. Got to push them back. So we can rise to higher heights. Trying to hold me back. Now you hold me up. It's like a, like a test. If you pass, then you have a... Uh, oh, wait. These are the 12s. And then the 14s go up there. So two 12s here. Sorry, they're still grimy. Yes, I did not uh, clean those. But... I guess what my test would be is over time that should dry off and uh, with rain and winter coming and all that nonsense I hope that the snow and silt and salt will abrade the rest of this grime away. Uh, okay, that's it. I need to pause and let the compressor charge back up. So I'll wait for the compressor charge back up and I'll bring you right here. So what we're doing is tightening those putting those on tightening them and then I'll tighten those two while uh, the compressor is charging so bring you guys back all of it should be buttoned up we'll put oil in it and that'll be that so one of the joys of working in the shop is a racket so they're gonna bring you guys along that compressor is taking its sweet time to pump up the pressure and uh, I had uh, started that one nut that wouldn't come out the socket over there where is it? Uh, can't tell what you guys can see because my hand's in the way. Alright, so I started it and uh, I get my socket back and do the rest. Man, come on. There's gonna be. Oh, wait, why am I taking the socket off the gun, dummy? Alright, oh, I'm trying to hand thread those on. Uh, yes. I was going to do that. So kids, look away. I've just lost my nut. Whoa! That's not good. 
I literally did. And now I'm getting frustrated. Ah. Found it. Alright, so. I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing now. I'm, 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 I probably shouldn't be doing this. I probably shouldn't be doing this. I'm talking myself out of doing it. And I'm going to do it anyway. Watch this. <laughs> Hold my beer. Kids, do not try that at home. I'm going to tell you right now. <clears throat> For those who are used to using impact guns, that's even a chore. Talk less of taking a risk on something like this, but I've gotten to the point now where I'm either going to finish this now or break out the thread repair kit or a stud removal, all kinds of crap. So let's see if I can't go two for two here. Oh yeah, so, uh, not my first rodeo, uh, powers that beat that I work for don't like it when I do that, but frequently I would advise against using impact tools to ratchet on, where is the, okay, so remember one of my air ratchets had a 12 millimeter nut stuck in it, that's this guy, oh my gosh, this is just turning to be, like the most unprofessional video ever. Oh, well. So ordinarily I would lift this thing way, way, way up and uh, spray it down with some type of degreaser and then take it over. Yeah. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, despite the appearances of the undercarriage of this vehicle, which is well lubricated and marinated, I do believe we are done. And uh, all I gotta do now, thank you for being here, because if I wasn't talking to you guys and inspecting this atrocity, I would have forgotten to plug in the O2 sensor. And I have to come back, plug it in, and then clear the resulting check engine light. So. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those of you who are wondering about my gloves, I do recommend them highly. They're 0.5 mil uh, micro guard. I think that. There we go. That's plugged in. Yeah, 0.5 mil micro guard. I think they come in blue, green, whatever. But I'm telling you, I mean, if you've seen them, bust, I must have snagged something real hard. Uh, they do real well. All right, I'm get out of here. Um, let's go back to the top. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I forgot. Did I mention that I wasn't motivated? Well, um, while I was waiting for the compressor to build up pressure, I uh, put the dipstick back and put oil in it. Um, well, while we're talking about, oh, 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 put that back on. There's a drop. There's a smidge of oil on my. Uh, all right, here. So let's talk about this for a minute. Here's my oil pan, and I wanted you guys to see what the cause of the leak was. So the oil pan still looks pretty sturdy, but like I said, I was worried about the bolt. I had unthreaded it once and didn't like the way it felt going back in. So, you know, 200 plus thousand miles of in and out. But here's a problem here. This guy very well adhered to the oil pan, so I doubt the leak came from there. I do believe the leak might have come from the top side, but I do believe when this thing was put on, those bolts had tension. And over time, this rubber, right, it is rubber, you can hear it cracking, it is hardened. It's, 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 it's hardened. I mean, it's not pliable, it's very stiff. And uh, I guess over time with heat and exposure to oil, that would happen to it. And if it shrinks in place, then there's no tension on the seal, um, you know, PCV pressure, which is probably something else I should check. Check positive crankcase um, pressure, positive crankcase ventilation, what the system is called, but the crankcase pressure could easily um, push oil out, you know, all the way around. So, you know, that's why we need the gasket. Did we, you know, had the oil pan failed? No, but you guys are always involved. 
um, and if I had to do the oil pan later, we would have to, you know, get a gasket then too. So that's that. So here we are. That's done. So oil's in it. Diff six back in. I probably could do the honors and start it, and get her out of here. But um, I want to thank you guys for enduring. Um, if this was helpful, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, I'm sure there are criticisms of the way I did this job. If I was sitting on the couch watching this, I'd probably be pointing it out. But you know what? It's fun to do. So how many mistakes did I make? How many violations aside from the uh, the uh, mortal sin of uh, threading those exhaust nuts on with the impact gun? You know. Um, anyway, enough of the rambling. I guess I should start it, yeah, and then go back and leak check. All right, do me a favor. Let me take these off. I I'm really tired of having the it's not look yeah got me i'll take these off uh bring you guys back in like two seconds two shakes of a micro guard uh glove all right so the gloves are off yeah the gloves are off baby um all right let's start her up and see what we got well, Woo! over here what's that wine i don't know what that wine is people Oh, you know what I didn't do? Didn't check to make sure the oil light went off. What a dummy. All right, the oil light is off, I think. No oil lights while this heat belt and uh, park. All right. Um, that wine sounded like it might have been coming from the alternator. Uh, our dipstick moves freely, so I didn't pinch that. Hard to pinch when it's not even in there. We got squealing from the belts. Yay. I don't know when I did that time ago, but it was a while ago. All right, so here's what I was talking about. Cam-end plug is a likely leak source. Valve cover gas, you can see they're all, it's all dry from up here. It's amazingly dry for its age. And for the severity of the leak it had, I kind of knew where I had to go next. Now let's go back down there. Uh, let's see what we can see. Let's hang out out here for a second. See if we see a puddle start to form. All right, so I know. I really don't think we'll have anything. Now, I remember I said, I did suspect, well, I did see a dip on the uh, oil pressure sending unit. Uh oh, moving belts. I want to get too close. All right. That noise is really loud right there. So I believe that we have full bridge rectification of the uh, current leaving the alternator. And uh, you can see a little bit of the flywheel spinning right there. We are done, people. All right, so thanks for watching. Like I said before, you know, if you guys got comments for me, please leave them below. And um, thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I know the video was shaky up close. I don't even know how it's going to turn out. But I'm not going to waste time editing it like I have uh, done in the past and uh, lost footage. So hopefully you guys like it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, your patience. I know it's a long one, almost 40 minutes. But I hope, uh, you know, some of the tips help you guys out. And... Uh, Here's uh, seeing you guys uh, in the next one, hopefully. All right, thanks. Bye.